everybody, welcome to Science Side Up. Um, and today we're gonna continue our discussion of Milankovitch cycles with the second factor of the obliquity of Earth's orbit. Yes, I'm wearing a ridiculous unicorn hoodie and I love it. The second part of the Milankovitch cycle, second of two, um, that we're going to talk about is the obliquity of Earth's orbit. What is obliquity, you ask? Great question. It's just how tilted is the Earth's axis of rotation off from like straight up and down. And that would be straight up and down relative to the plane that the or Earth orbits the sun on. So that's represented by this angle here. Right now it's 23.5 degrees. Um, and you would have learned about this like when you were a kid or something, when you learned about why the Earth has seasons, right? The Earth has seasons because our axis is tilted. And so um, in the, when it's summer for us here in the Northern Hemisphere, the Northern Hemisphere is tilted towards the sun. Um, but when it is winter in the Northern Hemisphere, that would be like the sun is over here where you can't see. Um, and that would be, uh, see the Southern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun. Um, yeah. So tilt of Earth's axis is pretty important. And it also, its effects on climate also have to do with um, summer winter differences. So if we were more tilted towards the sun, then we would have warmer summers, colder winters. Um, if we were less tilted, then we would have our, we would have more mild winters and more mild summers. So our summers would be not quite as hot and our winters would be not quite as cold. So this is actually why we paused the video last time when we were starting to talk about how Earth's eccentricity affects Earth's climate. Because if our eccentricity was closer to zero, where we're all like nice and stable, but the tilt was really far, right? We were as far tilted as we can get. Then you could imagine the effect of the obliquity maybe being more important for a few thousand years and we would have those more extreme uh, winters and summers. But if you had both, like the obliquity at its smallest and Earth's eccentricity really close to a perfect circle, oh, that would be like, chill weather all the time that'd be kind of great right so we can see how we have these two things that are competing with each other and obliquity has a period of forty thousand years let me grab a piece of chalk over the course of forty thousand years our obliquity gets as big as 24.5 degrees and as small as 22. And then, like I said, right now we're at 23.5 degrees. So I bet you're thinking to yourself, that doesn't seem like a very big change. Um, it certainly is big enough for us to have noticeable climate effects from it, but you're right. This isn't like a 30 degree swing. And we have our moon to thank for that. So it's actually the gravitational pull of Earth's moon um, that kind of helps keep us more, I would say more upright, but like it doesn't let our angle change too much. If you looked at a planet like Mars, um, where Mars does have two moons, um, there are different types of moons than Earth's. So Mars's moons are captured asteroids. So they're not nearly as big as the Earth's moon. So they don't have the same kind of gravitational relationship that we have with our moon. Um, so Mars's obliquity swings through like 40 degrees. Um, it, it almost tips all the way over. Uh, so it does change a whole lot more. So if we didn't have our moon, then obliquity would be like even more important. Changes in obliquity would be even more noticeable. Um, but back to how obliquity and eccentricity play with each other, notice that this is a period of 40,000 years and 
eccentricity had a period of 100,000 years. So our, while that eccentricity cycle is completing once, my obliquity will complete the 40,000 years, then to 40,000 more, so we're at 80,000 years elapsed, and get halfway through a third cycle. So um, all throughout that kind of change on our eccentricity, we will have the changes in obliquity. And so it's going to interact differently with what's going on with our eccentricity, depending on where we are in both cycles. So this is a place where it can get kind of complex. And we did talk a little bit about um, the net climate effects and, and all of that. Um, so hopefully this is pretty clear. Okay, team, that's all I've got for you today. Please like, subscribe, don't forget to be kind, and I will see you guys next time. Bye, team.